G'day everyone, welcome to this Workbench update. It's December 2022, the last update was back in July, and sorry about the big delay, but uh, I haven't been doing a lot of building, I've been busy with work and various other bits and pieces. Uh, so I haven't completed anything since last time, but have got a fair way on the Richard Petty Daytona 500 winning stock car. These are the only bits remaining to go into the model. And since the last update, all the paint's on and most of the assembly's done. This was all in primer from memory uh, from last time. But uh, yeah, coming, coming together quite well, considering the issues that I've had along the way. And those of you who have been following the uh, website or on social media will be aware of what some of those issues are. So I won't bother going through them all here at the moment. The instructions call for the wheels to be mounted on the chassis before the body goes on, but I've elected to wait because, uh, for example, this axle is not long enough to get the rear wheels to be wide enough under the, the rear body of the car. So I'll be putting these wheels on separately and I'll be cutting that axle in half and, and mount each, each wheel individually to hopefully get a better ride height and uh, stance, I guess you could say, of the model compared to what I've seen with uh, builds that are just sort of out of the out of the box. The only other bits and pieces here, um, this is the rear spoiler, and like a lot of the things in this kit, it's too thick and too chrome. <laughs> All right, it's just way too bright. That's supposed to be a little thin aluminium strip, as you can see, only just see on the back of the real car, and that's just massive. So I don't know whether just to stick it on. I'm wanting to get this build out of the way. I'm a little bit over it, to be honest. Uh, I just want to get it out of the way and move on to other stuff. So I may make up another rear wing. We'll spoil it. We'll see how we go. Um, these are decals to go for the hood pins. Uh, I, I could paint those, but I think I'll just put the decals on. And there's some other decoration here. I, I have no idea where these go. The instructions does not mention anything about them. So window net. Um, I'm going to try and get that window net to curve over and basically hang over the edge of the, uh, of the door. Uh, or I might just leave it off. I mean, it's not in the photo, the official photograph of the 500, so um, we'll see how we go. And this bit here is some ducting to go over the top of the radiator. So I'll just move that out of the way. So you can see some what's inside, got the engine detail. That uh, piece is going to end up going on top here, so hopefully that will make the body mount a little bit more easily as well, because this just sits on here and rocks backwards and forwards. There's no positive fitment or location for the body on the chassis. So that's just the way it is. For this uh, brand of kit by the look of it, or at least the Oldsmobile model. Anyway, so getting closer on that, um, the most recent changes obviously was the uh, getting the windows and everything. You get the body on the on the chassis. There's just bare metal foil around the edges. Uh, but as I said, uh, the issues that I've been having and all the step-by-step -step progress is on the website. Uh, link in the description. Um, there will be a build video of this done, but uh, that'll be a little bit way off yet. Now. The Lotus, uh, I have started on that. You would have seen that in the previous update, started on the engine, but I've halted that for the moment because I want to start on this one. And the reason being is the model club that I'm in is participating in Model Expo in Melbourne in the middle of next year. And I want to build this to suit the theme that the club is going to have on display. Uh, I can't really say what that theme is yet because the club does want, not want that revealed until the, the day of the expo. Uh, but this model will be built to, um, to suit that theme. So it's the Le Mans winning Sauber from 1989. I've got some zero paints here, which is a specific color mix for this model. So I've not used zero paints before. We'll see how that goes. I'll just have a look inside here. Um, I have not done an unboxing of this, so if you want to see a proper unboxing, let me know in the comments and I can, I can arrange that. But um, I've also got the uh, aftermarket carbon fiber from Scale Motorsport, and this is the one specific to this kit. It's got a template in there to cut all of the decal material out to suit the appropriate parts. And I got this second hand from a club member, so it's quite a few years old. This is not the re-release, this is the original release from back, I don't know, 1990 or something, so it's a fairly old kit now. Uh, but it's all it's all intact, it's all there, all in the bag still, still sealed. So uh, yeah, as I said, uh, I, I don't plan to do a, an unboxing. There's probably ones on the internet anyway, but if you want me to do one, just drop something in the comments. So we'll get onto that very shortly. As soon as I get this stock car out of the way, we'll be onto the uh, the sports car, the Le, the Le Mans winner. And just one other thing, 
This here is the box top of a model that I built a number of years ago. It's a 43rd scale Ferrari 643 uh, from a company that was not around for very long called Rosso. A model's made out of plastic and metal. And I'm in the process of doing a, a build video of when I did this from a few years ago. So uh, that will be landing fairly shortly. So those of you who are subscribers and you've got your notifications turned on, you'll be made aware of that hopefully in the not too distant future. Otherwise, that's where we stand at the moment. Um, I better get myself organized and get back building. Cheers.